Today I'm at one of my local lakes, Hayfield Lakes near Doncaster, and I'm here to show you the new pellet method feeder and how this came about. Two years ago I came here fishing across to the island in the 40s where you can reach the bank on a cast of about 45 metres. I had a great session, I caught a lot a lot of carp and also carassios and skimmers. But what I realised very quickly is that because the lake was absolutely flat calm and there was only me on the lake really this particular day, that on the retrieve of the method feeder, that the pellets must have been coming off the feeder as far as even 10 metres back from the island. And I realised this because I could see the bubbles where there were carp feeding on the soft bottom on the pellets that were ejecting off that feeder as, as I was winding it in. And this is why when you start fishing, you get very few indications, but as you've been fishing for a period, quite often with a method feeder, you get lots of liners and indications that dislodge the feeder at times and cause all sorts of problems. What you'll find with a rail tight feeder is that often when you wind it back, there's pellets stuck behind the rails. And this is what causes the problem as you pull it back through the water, then pellets are ejecting over that particular day, we're over 10 metres, it's incredible. And this is what causes all those liners and indications. It's fish that are actually inside the method feeder, eating all those free offering pellets. So this started me thinking, I started thinking about how I could develop a feeder that ejected the bait right where you want it. The prototype feeder that I came up with was a feeder with an open front. So the actual feeders open at the front and also open at the back. So once you start to retrieve that feeder, the pellets can come off. But of course, you'd still need those pellets to stay with the feeder. And this is why a rail type feeder is very good because the rails help to hold the pellets in place. So what I thought, if I have open end feeder at either end, but I put little pegs through the actual side of the feeder, then the pellets can't come off until the feeder is on the bottom when the water starts soaking into the pellets and then they start to lift and open on the feeder. Now it took me some time to actually make this feeder. I, I spent hours messing around in my tackle room like I do, but that was the, one of the first prototypes I made. I also then developed one slightly bigger that would take more pellets, but again, I got the pins in the side to hold the micro pellets in place. The next thing to think about then was how I could keep the bait in place on this feeder. So that's when I came up with developing the side of the feeder to have an, an uplift on it where once the pellets are moulded onto the feeder, they form a perfect method feeder. Back at Drennan HQ, I sent the method feeders where I'd played around with and straight away they developed a plastic type feeder that is just fantastic. If you look at it, what you've got, you've got the plastic sides where it stands up to fill the bait. You can fill the bait perfectly every time. It's now held in place with teeth that stick out of the side of the method feeder. Those three teeth either side holds the pellets or ground bait or a mix of pellets and ground bait, they hold it in place. So once it enters the water and is falling through the water, the pellets stay with the feeder, they can't be ejected from the feeder because it's a mass on the feeder itself. Of course, when the feeder arrives on the bottom, the next thing you want those pellets to open up. And if you soak your pellets 
so that they're quite soft. The pellets will open up quickly. And it doesn't matter how fast you'll get a bite. As long as those pellets are done properly, they're soaked well, once they start to open up and you retrieve that feeder, because the feeder's open, it leaves the pellets exactly where you're fishing. So you're building a swim, you're building a swim all the time. You're not spreading your pellets over an area like you would with a normal rail feeder. Let's have a look at the finer points of this feeder. The main thing for me is it fills very, very easily and quickly. You don't need a mould with this feeder because the, the shape of the side walls allows you to fill that feeder absolutely perfectly every time. As soon as you put the bait in the centre of the feeder, the bait is perfectly placed every single time. The next thing, the weight on the base is slightly biased forward. It's got more lead at the front of the feeder than at the back. This makes it so you can cast accurately and big distances also with this type of feeder. Also, when you're fishing up to an island on a slope, you want that feeder to grip the bottom because if that feeder moves, your trap's not set perfectly. So also on the base of the feeder, it's ridged as well. So when the feeder hits the bottom, it helps to hold it in place. The feeders open at both ends. So when you start to retrieve, you get perfect evacuation of the bait right in the zone where you want the bait to be. So it means that you actually build a swim up so you can get lots of fish in front of you and catch big weights with this feeder. When you cast this feeder, there's very little oscillation through the air. It flies very straight. But the main point is, when it lands on the water, if you hit that clip and plop that feeder in, it lands perfectly well every time. This feeder we've produced in just two sizes. The smaller feeder is in 25 gram and also 35 gram. And the bigger feeder comes in 35 gram and 45 gram. We've tried to keep the colour of the feeder as natural as possible to suit most lake beds. The feeder comes with a two-way stop bead. I prefer to use a rubber bead and swivel, but the two-way stop bead works perfectly well and fits in the base of the feeder. This feed has lifted my method feeder fishing to a different level and I've really enjoyed the development process and bringing this feeder for you to try. <laughs>